communion and pray the blessing, we will be looking at a very, very important subject and that is titled The Necessity of Soul Winning. The Necessity of Soul Winning. John chapter 12, verse 23 to 24. John 12, 23 to 24. And Jesus answered them and said, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' precious name. Our objective this morning is understanding the necessity of commitment to soul winning. The month of February, like you know, is our month of overflowing grace and glory through dedication. Through dedication. And you know it's confirmed in scripture that dedication, commitment, in fact, deadly commitment, as God's servant Bishop Yedegba will call it, deadly commitment to God is the way of the glory. So note that as the first thing I'll say this morning by way of introduction. Dedication, commitment, deadly commitment to God is the way of the glory. That was why he said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. But except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and dies, it abides alone. Commitment that is almost like commitment unto death. That is you are dead to everything. Is the way to the glory. Secondly, the way of seriousness with God is the way of gloriousness in life. The way of seriousness with God is the way of gloriousness of life. To be serious with God is to end glorious in life. You look at Abraham, you look at Moses, you look at Jacob, these were people that were serious with God and they ended with lives that were glorious. And the third is that Soul winning, commitment to soul winning is one of the most vital aspects of commitment to God. Commitment to soul winning is a critical aspect of commitment to God. It's a critical aspect of dedication to God. And it will launch us into the way of the glory. The question is, why is soul winning so necessary? Why is soul winning so important to God? I'll give you seven reasons. Soul winning is important to God, it's necessary because of one the sacrifice of the master Jesus on the cross the sacrifice of the master Jesus on the cross John 3:16 God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life Romans chapter 8, 
verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? God sacrificed so much to save man. So he wants man to be saved at all costs. Galatians chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. Grace be unto you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself. He gave himself for our sins that he may deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. God gave so much to save man. So man must be saved at all costs. Isaiah chapter 53 and in verse 11. He said, Jesus shall see the travail of his soul. He shall see of the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. He shall see the reason why he suffered and be happy. Soul winning is important because Calvary must not be in vain. Soul winning is important because the death of Jesus Christ on the cross must not be in vain. Soul winning is important because souls are important to God. Number two, because of what? Number two, the value of a soul. The value of a soul. Why is soul winning important? The value of a soul. Why is a soul so valuable? Because every human being is a carrier of the image of God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. The Bible said, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Because of the value of a soul. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. The Bible said, So God and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Every human being you see carries a deposit of God. A deposit of God. So every time a soul is lost in hell, it is an irreplaceable loss to God. Irreplaceable loss. That is why soul winning is important. Because of the value of a soul. That was why the Bible said in Mark chapter 8 verse 36. For what shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That means the soul of a man is bigger than the whole world. Someone say amen. Why is soul winning so necessary? Number three. Because of, number three, the brevity of life. The brevity of life. That life is so brief, so short. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, 12 verse 7. The Bible said, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Life is brief. James chapter 4 and in verse 14, he said, What is your life? It is even a vapor. He said, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanished away. Listen. Everybody you see today who does not know Jesus, you cannot guarantee their tomorrow. You are not sure you can see them tomorrow. Am I communicating? Anybody still following, say amen. 
I read the story from the man by the name R.A. Tory, Raymond Tory. He went to a restaurant in America. He's one of those ancient people that wrote very powerfully on prayer. Powerful man of God. He went to a restaurant in America and they sat while they were preparing uh, American evangelist, pastor, educator, writer. While they were preparing the meal for them. The Holy Ghost quickened in his heart. The, a particular waiter, a man, speak to that man. It was like um, an a la carte or something where they had to prepare, start cooking the food afresh and while they were waiting. Preach to this man. But you know the way we feel at times. When you feel like this is a public place, how will I just start preaching to somebody in a restaurant and so on? So, but he kept on waiting. The food was served. After about 30 something, 40 something minutes, he finished eating. Only for them to realize that a tragedy had occurred in that restaurant. What happened? This man, somebody had gone behind the kitchen of that restaurant and committed suicide. Who is that person? The same hotel waiter that the Lord said, speak to this man, was at the brink of death. Had planned to commit suicide. God saw it. God told him. He was hesitant. The man hung himself, died while they were still in the restaurant. He could never forgive himself Never could he recover for it for life. He was the one who told the story himself. What is your life? It's a vapor that appears. In the university, in those days, I preached to a young man. This guy was a Christian before. All of a sudden, he backslid. And I preached to him. I said, will you give your life to Christ and so on? And he told me something I will never forget. And until this day, it's a sorrow to my heart. He said, I don't want to serve God. He said, and I don't think there is a hell. And he said, and if there is a hell, I don't mind going there. This guy spoke so terribly. He went for a conference in Lagos. On return back to the campus, the first news I heard was that this boy, this was like a few weeks later, this young man became sick. He vomited like he vomited two bucketfuls of vomitors. They rushed him to the teaching hospital. Before they could reach the teaching hospital, he gave up the ghost. He was brought in dead to the accident and emergency, straight to the mortuary. And when I, when I heard that, I collapsed on the, on the, that was the first and maybe the last time I ever, I just, on my face, fainted literally. Because the last thing he told me was in my ears. I don't think there is a hell. And if there is a hell, I don't mind going there. The devil did an overtime on that young man. And I'm going to come to that later. Why is soul winning important? Because of the brevity of life. That is why at times we, you need to force some people, put them under pressure to give their lives to God. Why is it important? Number four, the reality of eternal hell. The reality of eternal hell. The fact that hell is real and the fact that heaven is real and those who don't know God are going to hell. And those who know God are going to heaven. By the mercy of God, I have seen slight peak visions of hell. It's not a place to go. And by the mercies of God, I have seen slight visions of heaven. I saw myself lying down one day in worship in a place I recognize like the throne room. As the throne room in that revelation. 
with sound coming from everywhere worship. It is not a place to miss. Hell is not a place to make. Heaven is not a place to miss. Look at what the Bible said in Psalm 9 verse 17. It said, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Daniel chapter 12 and in verse 2, he said, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Matthew chapter 25 verse 41. He said, And he shall say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire that was prepared for the devil and his angels. There is an everlasting fire, not prepared for man. Prepared for the devil, but men go there when they refuse to obey God. Now, Mark chapter 9, verse 43 to 48. It's one scripture that made the mark on me as a young Christian. If thy hand offend you, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where they are warm, dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for you to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where they are warm, diet not, and the fire is not quenched. And if your eye offend you, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Where they are warm, diet not. And the fire is not quenched. That is, the fire is endless. And the worm that came out of the person's body is eternal. And the torment on the worm, the owner of the worm feels the pain of it. It's, it's real. In a real one church, I preach the message, hell is real. I'm sure many of you remember that message. In one of, I think it was in the second service, one young lady who came out for the altar call, uh, 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 before I could have the time to pray for them, fainted on the altar. And the ushers carried her. Usher wanted to carry her and realized one person couldn't lift her up. Two, three, four people just gone. They took her to the back of the altar. They were one the corridor of the office there. After the first service, after that service, I went back there. Using my medical doctor knowledge, to try to find out if she was in coma or whatever was, was it, call her she wasn't, applied the highest level of pressure, sternal pressure, and there was zero response, which was me, which meant that if she was either dead or totally in coma. What? Can somebody come into church and die like that? And then I placed my hand on the pulse. I thought I felt something faint. I wasn't sure. But then I screamed into her ears. You can't come to church and die like this. In the name of Jesus, come back. And she came back. Jacked and came back. I was relieved. Went back into church. When they found out the detail, they said the last thing she, she said, the last thing she remembered was when she came out of the altar call and she collapsed. Next, she found herself on the road and then came and saw a tall angel standing right there and he looked this way and saw people inside fire burning and screaming and he looked this way and saw in the far distance people celebrating and rejoicing and she told the angel I want to go there to where the people are celebrating and the angel said what you are wearing is dirty you can't enter there this is where you belong pointed to hell she had not prayed the prayer she just stepped out it was at that point of their conversation that I came and I said come back and she jerked back to life to me that day it was as if when I said hell was real God wanted to show somebody the reality of that hell 
that don't just preach the message. Let somebody witness the reality of hell. Is God speaking to somebody here? Why do we preach? One of my friends saw the revelation of hell many years ago when we were young converts. And he said to me, he said, you won't like your metal to go to hell. Uh, that your metal, that is your piece of iron, provided it is yours, you won't like it there. Am I communicating at all? Why do we preach? Why is soul winning important? Because of the reality of hell. The, 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 our friends, our brothers, our sisters, our loved ones that must not go to hell. We, we put them under pressure to know Jesus Christ. Number five, the shortness of time. The shortness of time. The fact that time is short. Time is short. Time is short. First, first Corinthians chapter 7 verse 29, a part. He said, but this I say brethren, the time is short. The time is short. The time is short. Romans chapter 13 verse 11 to 12. Romans 13, 11 to 12. He said, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. That is, we are closer to the end than when we first came to the Lord. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. First John chapter 2 verse 15 to verse 17. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away. The world is passing away. And the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now this is very touching. First Peter chapter 4 verse 7. First Peter chapter 4 verse 7. He said, but the end of all things is at hand. The end of all things, the end of materialism, the end of strife, the end of quarreling, the end of bitterness, the end, I can't talk to this one, I can't talk to that one. The end of all things, the end of money making, the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore so, be ye therefore sober. Calm down, calm down, think, slow, calm down, and watch unto prayer because the end of all things is at hand. Calm down, sober down, be sober, be sober, be sober. We are closer to the end, for example, than 20 years ago. The COVID situation only came to reveal to us that a time will come when humanity, who don't know God, will be quarantined in hell forever. Came to show us that a time will come when the laws will be made, the Antichrist laws that nobody can go against. We are closer to the end. That's why soul winning is important. Number six, because of what? Number six, the restlessness of the enemy. The restlessness of the enemy. The devil knowing that his time is short, is so restless, is doing a lot of overtime. That is why we must win souls. We must talk to people and touch the lives of others because of the restlessness of the enemy. The devil is doing a lot of overtime knowing that his time is short. In Job chapter 1 verse 7, Satan spoke to God and he said, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it, from going to and fro in the earth, I'm just moving restlessly. In Revelation chapter 12 and in verse 12, Revelation chapter 12 and in verse 12, said, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. 
Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great anger, because he knows that he has but a short time. He has but a short time. The story I told you about that guy in the university who just got cut short is an example of satanic over time, over time, over time. He's just in a hurry, doing a very quick walk. But he will never do it on your life in the name of Jesus Christ. That is why, that is why soul winning is important because the devil is very, very restless. Somebody called me some time back. I knew him from secondary school. And I think I was doing something. I wasn't able to, I think I saw the call later. I, was, I can't remember the full details now. Next time I called these people to say, okay, so as the person was calling me, he has gone. What? That was when I realized that there is a lot of enemy restlessness going on. Why do we why is soul winning necessary? It's necessary because of number seven, the love of the father, the heart of the father, the love of the father. First Peter chapter three, verse nine. I'm sorry, second Peter chapter three, verse nine. He said, God is not slack. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some people count slackness, but he is long-suffering to, towards us. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Some people say, they, they've been saying Jesus will come. Why has he not come? He said, God is not slack. He's not slow. He's just wishing that one more person be saved. 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 The heart of the father. How many of you remember the story of the prodigal son? That story typifies the father and his household. When the prodigal son came to himself and he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to eat and I am here dying of hunger? I will arise. And he arose. In Luke chapter 15, verse 20, I want you to see something. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran from the house to meet him and fell on his neck and kissed him. Can I ask you a question? His father saw him afar off. Means that his father was sitting in the parlor or in the bedroom. In all probability, where was the father? Outside the house, standing on the balcony, watching for when the prodigal will return. I'm about to say something that will shock you. The father was outside the house. There, there may be music in the house. There may be celebration in the house. People are eating, drinking. That was the father's mind was somewhere. In most churches today, God is outside the house. You go ahead and be doing your ceremony. I am waiting for the one outside that is not yet come. So I cannot be a part of your wild parties when the prodigals are lost and you don't care. That's why there is very, very scarce manifestation of God in most places today where entertainment took the place of impartation. Because the father is outside Waiting for the prodigal to come home. And the best place to join the father is where he is. 
Am I communicating? Most of the things that most people celebrate is to God's shadow. Do you know what they celebrate in heaven? Luke chapter 15 verse 7. Luke 15 7. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven. Joy shall be in heaven. Joy shall be in heaven. Over one soul that repented more than 99 righteous people who need no repentance. See, I am happy that you are saved. I thank God that your blind eyes saw. I thank God that you got your contract. I thank God that you eventually got married. You eventually got your children. I thank God that you got all these things, but I can tell you, I am far more excited that one soul got saved than anything that is making you to rejoice. Am I communicating? That is why. That is why. The father's heart is the heart that is literally out on the field looking for the prodigals of the earth. He is the shepherd who will go after one sheep despite 99 that are saved. I want us to join the father. Let's review what we have said so far. Soul winning is necessary because of what? One, the sacrifice of the master Jesus on the cross. Two, the value of a soul, the soul of man. Three, the brevity, the transientness of life. Four, the reality of eternal hell. Five, the shortness of time. Six, the restlessness of the devil. Number seven, the love of the father. This is my counsel. I'd like you to note it, number one. The best way to live is to live for God. The best way to live is not to live for self. It is to live for God. Philippians chapter 1 verse 21, the Bible said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. The best way to live is to live for God. If all you did was to spend your lifetime working to build a house, working to get cars and working to get this and working to get that, and you have not one soul to meet Jehovah with, what will you say when you meet him? There is a song that said, Must I go and empty handed does my dear redeemer mean not one soul with which to greet him must I empty handed go the verse again, must I go and empty handed does my dear redeemer meet? Not one day of service give him. Lay no trophy at his feet. Must I go an empty handed? Must I meet my savior so? Not one soul with which to greet him. Must I empty handed go? Must I go empty? Will I just spend my whole life pursuing sh shadows? The best way to live is to live for God. Number two, if you attend to what is close to the heart of God, God will attend to what is close to your heart. If you attend to what is close to the heart of God, God will attend to what is close to your heart. In John chapter 15 verse 16. He said you have not chosen me. But I have chosen you. And I have ordained you. That you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. So that whatsoever you are asking the father in my name. He may give it to you. 
if you attend to what is close to the heart of God, God will attend to what is close to your heart. What is it that is the most important thing to you? Attend to what is the most important thing to God. And God will attend to what is the most important thing to you. Listen to it again. If you attend to the concerns of God, he will attend to the concerns of your life. It's another way to say it. If you attend to the concerns of God, you will attend to the concerns of your life. Let me say it the third way, under this point. If you bear the burdens of God, God will bear the burdens of your life. The things that bother you, that are your burden, that weigh you down. If you bear the burdens of God, God will bear the burdens of your life. You will bear the burdens of your life. The things that weigh you down. Because this is the burden. Someone said, you know, the way we have first and second heart sounds. And like they used to say in medical parlance, lop, dop, lop, dop, lop, dop, lop, dop, lop, dop. And you are hearing first and second heart sounds, clean heart sounds. Someone said, if you listen to the heart of God, this is the sound. Souls, 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 souls. His heart beats for souls, after souls, after souls, souls, souls. In Japan, in China, in India. In Indonesia, in Venezuela, in America, among the homosexuals, the gays, the lesbians, the billionaires, the millionaires, the paupers, those on the street, souls, the killers, the kidnappers, the arm robbers, the terrorists, souls, souls, souls. Day, night. That is what pushes us. That is what brings us back from the crusade and then you are right on the street again. Rescuing and wrecking souls. That is point number two, counsel and note. Number three. If you occasion joy in heaven, if you facilitate the joy of heaven, heaven must facilitate the joy of your life. Is it, is it inevitable? You say you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. If you facilitate the joy of heaven, that is you make joy to happen in heaven. No devil on earth can prevent heaven from making joy to happen in your life. Happen in your life. Luke 15, 7. Say there is joy in heaven. And then I believe it was James 4, 6, where he said, draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. And Psalm 18, I think verse 25 or 35, where he said, to the upright, you will show yourself upright. To the pure, you will show yourself pure. That is what you do to me determines what I do for you. With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. With the upright man, you will show yourself upright. Bring joy to heaven. I will bring joy into your life. Let heaven rejoice because of you. I will make you to rejoice. Let heaven celebrate because of you. And I will make you to celebrate irrespective of any devil. Hallelujah. Finally. Be wise. Pour your life, time, energy, and resources into what will matter. Be wise. Pour your life, time, energy, and resources into what will matter for time and eternity. Be wise. Pour your life your time, your energy, your resources into what 
will matter. What will matter? What will matter for time and eternity? I am preaching full time right now. I'm going to give an altar call after this message. That does not stop me from going to the street to minister to souls. That does not stop me from giving my pocket money, not church money, my money for printing of tracts does not stop me from the money of my pocket, from building of churches. I want to trust God to build a church, even if it is 100 sita this year, a month. Yes, I'm trust, I want to trust God for that. 500 sita or a thousand. Why? I am laying in store against the time to come. Am I communicating? You are a billionaire. Congratulations. Don't let the making of billions stop you from reaching your friends for God. We are going to be dealing on these subjects throughout this month. Diverse evangelistic methods and tools will be exposed to us. How you can go about this and how your life can be relevant to the kingdom. All that will be exposed. Tracks are available here this morning for people to pick. In those days, when we were growing up in the Lord in the 70s, early 80s, you didn't, you are not well dressed until tracks, gospel materials are in your pocket to distribute inside taxi. That is if you are not, if you don't preach. Hallelujah. Opportunities to reach the lost and to minister will be available abundantly. But I want us to make up our minds that we are going to live that life that matters. And you won't need to beg God to bless you. The blessing will flow without asking. I prophesy upon somebody today when the role is called up yonder, you will not only be there, you will be there with your rewards. You will be there with your rewards. You will be there and you will be rewarded. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. Lift up your right hand everywhere you are. Maybe stand up on your feet if you can. Fading away like the stars of the morning. Losing their life in the glorious sun. Mm -hmm. Take the first, first two verses. Fading away like the stars of the morning. Losing their in the glorious sun. Thus would we pass from the earth and his toil. Oh, we remember what he only remembered. Oh, only remembered. Oh. Your voice and say, Oh, 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 Larry, the God, oh, oh, Larry, the God, oh, 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 is on. 
anywhere you are. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. Begin to make up your mind to come out because I will call you shortly. Two. Shall we be missed though by your orders succeed? Reaping the fields with his spring time of soul. Yes, but the soul has passed from their labors. Only remember, though. only remember, though. only remember, though. only remember, by one, those Verse 4. When the Savior 
still in the audience, all our locations worldwide. You need to hand over your life to Jesus and surrender to him and make today to mark a new day for you. And want Jesus to be Lord of your life. You want to be saved. You want to be genuinely born again. And you need help from God. Pray this prayer with me. And say after me, Lord Jesus, louder, I am a sinner. I am in need of help. Come into my life, Jesus. Make me a new person. Today I have decided to follow you, Jesus. No turning back. From today, I go forward ever, backward never. Thank you, Master. And thank you, Master. In Jesus' name. Amen. Those who pray that prayer, wave your hand. Yes, those in the crowd. I see many in the crowd. All right. I see a lot of the children from the school waving their hands. And the chaplain, please attend to them and ensure that they are followed up. Now, up beyond that, every other person, wave your hand. Let me see you. Wave your hands, all of you. You pray this prayer. Yes, I see the people who pray that prayer. I live for Jesus day after day. While that song is on, and at the count of seven, pick your Bibles and your bags and quickly rush to the front here and be the first to come. Join us. Some are already in the front. Join them quickly at the count of seven. One. Everybody remain standing still. Just a minute. Don't be the last to come. Be the first. Two. I saw many hands there. Rush to the front. Three. I live for Jesus. Four. Day after day. Five. Six. And seven. I live for Jesus. I live for Jesus. bondage of addiction drunkenness, smoking alcoholism and you want to be free from this bondage I'd like you to come forward lifestyle that you are not happy with you want to be free from it 
I'm tired of smoking, tired of drinking, tired of womanizing, tired of prostitution, tired of this kind of life, fraud, internet fraud, gambling. Quickly come forward. Move on, move on, don't be tired. My Savior understands. It must be well. Move on, move on, don't be tired. My Savior understands. It shall be well. your right hand on your chest. Those of you in the front, and pray this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I've come before you today to surrender my life to you. Forgive me my sins. Today, I have decided to follow you. No turning back. From today, I go forward ever. Backward never. Thank you, Lord helping me to love you, to live for you, to do your will. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for you today. I declare the hold of sin broken of your life. Grace to live for God is released upon you. Help from above. That is your portion. In Jesus' precious name.